Well, in the last video, we talked about the structure of the double helix of the DNA molecule, and we explained why it is the way it is. But the double helix is just the beginning of the structure of the DNA, because you see, DNA will start coiling on top of itself, and eventually becomes this, this chromosome that we see inside the cell during the cell division process, or the chromatin that you see when the DNA is active during the interface. And how that happens is the key. DNA coils around molecules called histones, which are protein. I told you in the beginning of this lecture series that we were going to talk about how proteins are integral to the formation of DNA. And on the next video, when we talked about the DNA synthesis process, you will see that a group of 10 proteins is actually necessary for DNA to copy itself. But in addition to that, the structure of the DNA molecule as a macromolecule would be impossible if it wasn't for the, another group of proteins called histones. And so that raises the question, how can DNA exist without proteins? But basically, there's two groups of histones. One acts like a little area for DNA to coil itself around of, and another one comes after to, to attach to that to help stabilize the structure. So you see the red one is the surface, to, and the yellow one is the one that attaches. And at that point, we call this the scaffold nucleosome. Now, these nucleosomes will start gathering on top of each other, as you see up there, and forming a coil, a scaffold where of many, many DNA str uh, strands all coiled around the same uh, histones and then histones attached to other histones. This coil will then coil even more to become a supercoil. And then the supercoil will coil even more to become the actual chromosome. And it, it's interesting how you can see that the way it actually will look like is a large jumble of fibers which include protein and DNA, but mostly protein. Notice the DNA is just the blue. The nucleosomes, which are made of DNA plus protein, include mostly protein. There's a lot more protein in chromosomes than there is DNA. And that's why at first they weren't sure about which one was the most important one. And that's why the studies that Hershey and Chase and uh, Avery did were crucial to, to determine that it was DNA that was actually the key. When Avery discovered that chromosomes were what you needed to put in the bacteria to make them transform, then people were like, sure, DNA is the key, but the chromosomes are full of proteins. So which one is the key? And then Hertz and Chase have to come back and isolate the, the protein part from the DNA part with color so they could see that the viruses only needed to put the, 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 the DNA part in order to make the, the cells actually change. And that was the ultimate thing that actually identified DNA as the key genetic component of cells. And notice, by the way, that an additional protein scaffold is going to be included on the center of all the chromosomes. And then, then, you, then these chromosomes will basically be inside of your cell and compose your carrier type, which is a group of many, many chromosomes all strung together. Remember that normally chromosomes only, uh, will only be about half of what you see in this picture. That's one chromosome. The other side is a copy of the same that's only going to happen after the S phase is completed and DNA synthesis is completed and the DNA kind of copied itself. Also, notice that before that process, before you get to tel telophase and the DNA calls itself up, you don't have a chromosome at all. What you actually have is chromatin, as you see in this picture here, which is a jumbled mass of DNA and some pieces are more coiled up than others and you see that happening in that picture there. The pieces which are very, very co coiled up are called heterochromatin, and they're not actually active. They're just not coiled up in chromosomes, but they're not being read. And euchromatin are the pieces that are actually being read and are opened up and are undergoing protein synthesis processes. And we'll talk about that transcription in another video lecture series that's coming up, and we'll review this idea of hetero versus euchromatin at that point as well. Now, also notice that the components of the D DNA, as they get added together, they become thicker and thicker. And we talked about those two nanometers of distance between the, the helixes, but after the, you get to the point of coiling them up around the, the, the histones and make nucleosomes, then the DNA at that point is 30 nanometers thick. By the time you get to, to coils, you're talking about seven, a, a 300 nanometers thick. By the time you get to super coils, you're talking 700 nanometers thick, and an actual chromosome is twice as thick as that at 1400 nanometers thick. And so that's already a picometer pretty, pretty much. And as you can see, the, the, the compaction of the chromosome is insane because you go from the DNA itself to, to the nucleosome, to coils and to supercoils until you have to get to the chromosome. It's going to be a lot of packed DNA. Remember, you have enough DNA on you to stretch from here to the sun and back 400 times. And each cell has a meter wide of DNA. That is a lot of DNA. And when we, when we do DNA extraction with strawberry in class, you will see what we're talking about. A small strawberry has a 
ginormous amount of DNA inside of it. And all of this DNA is packed in this chromosomal structure that you see there. All right? And so remember, uh, double helix around his stones, nucleosomes, coils, supercoils, chromatin fibers, which, then coil, which can be normal chromatin, which is open and being used, which is called euchromatin, or very, very co coiled up chromatin, which is called heterochromatin, which is not being read, or doing the division, even more coiled in actual chromosomes. And now remember then when you're talking about chromosomes, you're going to have the centromere, which is the center of, where the, chrom of the chromosome. It's a piece of non-coding DNA that actually attaches each sister chromatid or each half of a, of a two-copy chromosome molecule. And then you have the corners, which are called the telomeres, which are basically junk DNA, which is there to protect the DNA from degradation. And we'll talk about that on the DNA synthesis part. And then you have the P arm and the Q arm, which are the short and long arms. The P arm is the one above the centromere, and the Q arm are the ones, the ones below the centromere. In our, in our body, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, uh, 46 total. 22 are autosomes that help determine all of our body functions, and one pair is sex chromosomes, which help determine the gender, and, but also include other things as well. And the male care type will be XX, and the female care type will be XY. This is a brush review of what we already talked about in the DNA um, chromosome inheritance lecture series. And so, from here, we move on to talk about differences between DNA and RNA. I'll see you on that video.